the most dramatic and significant divine revelation in history took place over 3,000 years ago when the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were redeemed from their slavery in Egypt, came to Mount Sinai, and God literally revealed himself to them with the dramatic words, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I am the Lord your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. It's significant that God did not simply say, I am God, or I am the Almighty God who created the entire cosmos. God identified himself specifically as the God who redeemed us, took us out of the land of Egypt. And that's how we are to understand God. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 35, God says that he showed us so that we should know who he is. And there is no one else. There's none other. And therefore, idolatry is defined as the worship of anyone or anything that was not revealed to our ancestors at Mount Sinai. Throughout the Bible, God says that he despises idolatry because idolatry is a spiritual form of adultery. And none of our ancestors who stood at Mount Sinai ever reported to their children or grandchildren that God was revealed to them as having human form or that God was revealed to them as a trinity. Now, it's not difficult to understand the appeal of idolatry because it's extremely difficult to relate to a God that we cannot see. In addition, there is a philosophical problem. Philosophically, we understand that there is an infinite gap between a divine being who is omnipotent and omniscient and transcendent and a human physical world, physical world where we are limited, we're physical, we're finite. God is transcendent. How is this gap ever going to be bridged? Christianity proposes a very, very compelling narrative. They say that this infinite gap was bridged by God taking on human form and coming to live in our physical world so that we could have more access to him. Even though this narrative is compelling, and it might even be to some people attractive, it is not what the Bible teaches. As a matter of fact, it's completely the opposite of what the Bible actually teaches. Our Bible says to us that this gap between the Almighty and ourselves will not be bridged by God coming into the world and taking on human form, but rather by human beings becoming more godly themselves. In the book of Leviticus chapter 19, God challenges us and says, Kedoshim tihiyu ki kadosh ani. You shall be holy as I, God, am holy. And so therefore God says to us that the gap between the infinite and the finite is not going to be bridged by him becoming more human, but on the contrary, by human beings becoming more godly.